fuck are you doing? Obviously, I wasn't intentionally cooking the lettuce. It's in front of your fucking eyes! Fuck me. Is that it? Oh, fuck that. Hell's Kitchen is no stranger to chaos, but when Ramsay loses it, the kitchen truly becomes a battlefield. From overcooked meat to raw fish to missed orders, every mistake adds fuel to Ramsay's fiery temper. But there are a few times when Ramsay didn't just raise his voice, but brought hell to Hell's Kitchen. What's going? I have no idea, sir. Oh my god almighty. Hey. Fuck it off. Hey, hey, madam, through the door there. Oh man, this dinner service was pure chaos from the get-go. Ramsay set the tone early on, making it clear to the chefs that there was no room for error today. They were in the race for the final six, and he wasn't about to let anyone take that lightly. The big boss made it clear that he expected nothing less than the best from them, not just individually, but as a team. Up until then, it had been about teamwork, but now it was each chef for themselves. Because tonight you're going to show me why each and every one of you are worthy of being in the final six. Is that clear? And then the kitchen opened for prep. That's when things started to fall apart. Giovanni was at the meat station, and from the very beginning, it was like he forgot how an oven works. The guy kept opening and closing it like he was checking for leftovers. No management, no plan, just chaos. Ramsey wasn't having any of it, warning him that if he kept at it, he'd be sorry in 30 minutes. Every time that oven door opened, Giovanni was adding another 30 seconds to his cooking time, and it was obvious that those seconds were adding up fast. You're gonna open closing that door. In half an hour's time, you're gonna be sorry. Okay, chef. Okay, now you're cooking chicken in there. Every time you open it, add 30 seconds. Meanwhile, Robert was over at the fish station, struggling with scallops. Now, scallops aren't the toughest thing to cook, but pressure does funny things to people. His scallops came out overcooked, and they were tiny. Ramsay pointed it out, and honestly, it's cooking 101. The smaller they are, the quicker they cook. But Robert was too caught up in the madness, and the scallops suffered for it. Robert! That's shit! Yeah? Cook the fucking rubber, touch that! They're overcooked! Hurry up! Buy three more! And then, there was Andrea on the garnish. She wasn't having the best day either. She started throwing potatoes into a cold pan, a total rookie mistake. I mean, sure, getting ahead is great, but not like this. You could see the confusion all over her face, and Ramsay wasn't about to let it slide. He made her stop in her tracks to explain the basics. Cooking potatoes in a cold pan? That's how you get greasy, unappetizing potatoes. And who wants that? When you fired the entree, and you put the potatoes in, and not only that, but the pan's stone cold, so they're gonna be fatty, greasy potatoes. Yes, Chef. After Ramsay's talk, Andrea panicked and just tossed the potatoes in the bin. This really ticked Ramsay off. Yeah, they had an unlimited pantry, but that didn't mean they could waste food like that. It was careless, and Ramsay wasn't having it. Why are you throwing it away now? I, I thought it would... It's just easy for you, isn't it? We'll just trash it, who cares? No, Chef. About 30 minutes in, Paula was the only chef actually holding it together. Her appetizers were coming out well, but Giovanni on entrees? Not so much. The chicken specials were a disaster. His first batch was burnt, and when he brought out the second batch, it was raw, and not just undercooked, I'm talking bloody raw. Giovanni's excuse? He claimed chicken wasn't his strong suit. That's a bit shocking to hear in Hell's Kitchen of all places. Ramsay's patience was running thin, and with each minute that ticked by, you could feel the frustration building. Delays were piling up, and it was clear Ramsay wasn't going to let Giovanni's excuses fly. Come on, it's got blood in it! I got another one in, Chef! It's one of those dishes that I didn't know much about. This chicken was new to me, and I should have known about it. When Ramsay starts getting worked up, you know trouble's brewing. Andrea didn't seem to get the memo, though. When Ramsay asked her what was going on, she flat out ignored him. It wasn't like Ramsay was across the room or anything. He was right there. Her mind was elsewhere, and it showed. Ramsay doesn't tolerate being ignored, especially when things are already going sideways. But Andrea was so lost in her own world that she didn't even notice. Right, Andrea, what's going? No answer. I'm not in the best of moods, huh? I don't like being ignored in my own fucking kitchen. When she finally did answer him, she had no idea what she was doing or where she was supposed to be. 
she was running around like a headless chicken. It was kind of funny to watch in a what is happening right now sort of way. But at the same time, you just knew this was the moment Ramsey was going to lose it. The story of your fucking life, yeah? You have no idea. Yes, sir. Hey, she's running the section, yet she has no idea what's going. And lose it, he did. It's one thing to be under pressure and make mistakes, but when the head chef is asking you what's going on and you have no clue, that's not a good look. Ramsey wasn't just upset at this point. He was livid. You could feel it coming. The kitchen was in shambles, with Giovanni's raw chicken, Robert's overcooked scallops, and Andrea's confusion. It was a train wreck, and Ramsey had hit his limit. Yeah, the rest is fucking normal. Yes, yes chef. chef. Unlike us. That dinner service was one for the books, and not in a good way. Ramsey wanted the chefs to prove they could work as a team, but all he got was a disjointed mess. It was clear that some of them just weren't ready for the heat. Hold on to your hats, because the chaos in the kitchen was about to reach a whole new level. Ramsey was trying to keep his cool, but it was clear that was becoming an impossible task. He called Andrea forward and hit her with the million dollar question. How was she supposed to cook the orders if she didn't even know what was being ordered? You could practically see the steam coming out of his ears as he tried to suppress his growing anger. Looking for some backup, Ramsey turned to Giovanni thinking maybe he'd have a clue. Spoiler alert, he didn't. Giovanni mumbled out some order details, but they were all wrong. It was like watching a bunch of kids on a group project, and none of them had read the instructions. Ramsey's frustration hit a boiling point. He started shouting out orders himself, hoping that maybe, just maybe, one of them would catch on. Two Wellington, one medium, one medium red, a lamb medium, I mean, I'm sorry, a lamb medium red, two lamb medium oh red. My. Now you won't believe what happened next. Ramsey called Andrea forward again, asking if she had any idea about the orders this time. And guess what? Her response was the same as before. No idea. Are you serious? She looked like a deer caught in headlights. Ramsey could only take so much of this nonsense. He opened the kitchen gate and, with a classic Ramsey flair, told her to jack off and get out. Ouch. I felt a twinge of sympathy for Andrea, but honestly, I couldn't blame Ramsey. This was Hell's Kitchen, and if you can't handle the heat, you've got to hit the road. What's going, madam? I have no idea, chef. You have no idea. I have no idea, Hey, come here, you. But Ramsey didn't just stop there. He told her to leave the restaurant entirely. Talk about a dreaded walk of shame. As she shuffled out, you could almost feel the collective gasp from everyone watching. Andrea might have had a decent run in the competition, but that night, the pressure was breaking her down piece by piece. Hey, hey madam, through the door there. Fuck off. Just as she decided to leave, the restaurant manager caught her in the nick of time. He laid it down straight. If she didn't pull herself together and get back in that kitchen, it would be the end of the line for her. The pressure was clearly overwhelming, and Andrea was feeling it hard. She took a deep breath, realizing she wanted to stay and prove herself. Finally, she gathered her wits and made her way back to the kitchen, determined to get a grip on what was actually going on. Phew, what a turnaround. So now you need to be strong. Go back in there and give it your best shot. Go on then. But don't get too comfy because this wild night was far from over. As Andrea started to find her footing again, Ramsey called Robert forward next. And what did he do? He put bacon in the pan with the dory, the fish that was supposed to be paired with the scallops. Are you kidding me? Talk about a serious rookie mistake. Anyone with half a brain knows that mixing those two could lead to some major allergy issues. Ramsey was seeing red. He had to remind Robert that this isn't just cooking. It's about health and safety. You can send somebody to the hospital on the back of that. Oh, you're in. Oh, come on. Oh, you're right. In typical Ramsey fashion, he kicked the trash bin in frustration and told Robert to get it together. Take control, he shouted. Robert was scrambling to fix this mess, and honestly, it was a sight to behold. Meanwhile, Ramsey was counting on Giovanni to pull through at the meat station and get the first entree out. Spoiler, it didn't go well. When Giovanni finally sent out the first plate, it looked like a dog had chewed it up and spit it out. Seriously, it was that bad. 
Ramsey took one look at it and you could see his jaw drop. What even was that? It was supposed to be a special, but it was anything but. He said it looked like chewed dog bits and then, um, he called him a dick face. Ouch, right? You could hear the collective wince from everyone in the kitchen. Your special has now become not very special, thanks to dick face there. With his patience wearing thin, Ramsey just yelled for Giovanni to hurry up and fix it. This was turning into a train wreck of epic proportions. Each chef was struggling to find their footing, and Ramsey was losing his mind trying to hold the whole operation together. It was a hot mess, and the stakes had never been higher. Oh boy, if you thought things couldn't get any crazier in that kitchen, think again. Giovanni, after being roasted by Ramsey for his awful chicken dish, decided to take the plunge into what can only be described as the worst mistake of his life. He talked back. Yes, you heard that right. With the bravado of someone who had just finished a marathon, Giovanni shot back that he wasn't a dick face. I mean, seriously? Did he just say that? All eyes turned to him, and you could practically see the wrath coming up. This guy just served up a disaster and thought he could clap back at the master chef. Hurry up, Giovanni! Yeah, but I'm not this face, chef. Ramsey, as you can imagine, was having none of it. He stepped right up into Giovanni's face, a fiery red hue creeping up his neck, making it clear just how pissed he really was. Because if Giovanni thought he was mad, he should take a glance at Ramsey for once. At that moment, it was a wonder Giovanni didn't just shrink into the floor. Ramsey looked ready to pick him up and toss him right in the trash bin. But the moment Giovanni thought he could escape with just one comment, he shot himself in the foot again, telling Ramsey not to call him a donkey, claiming he was just an emotional person. Not as as I am! You fucking are! Donkey! No. Let me tell you, Ramsey doesn't do well with excuses, especially when the food looks like it came out of a compost heap. Ramsey asked if he really wanted to serve that slop. He could take off the jacket and fuck right out of the gate. At that point, Ramsey was shouting so loudly that I swear even the folks in the farthest corner of the restaurant were cringing. Hey, oh, look chef. at me, look at me. You serve me shit like that, take your jacket and fuck off. Yes, chef. But hold on to your seats. The drama didn't stop there. Seeing Giovanni spiraling, Ramsey turned to Ben, asking him to take over the meat cooking. Ramsey probably thought this would be a slam dunk. But nope, Ben was just as much of a train wreck. He started cutting up cooked chicken and tossing it back in the pan, saying it wasn't fully cooked. Are you kidding me? That's a surefire way to end up with dry chicken. Ben confidently claimed it was juicy as ever, but Ramsey was having none of that. Oh, the goodness is running out of it because you've cut through it, you thick cunt. Yes. Let's just stand back and watch that chicken and the juice piss out of it. Now, two hours into dinner service, and they'd barely managed to serve entrees to five tables. Let that sink in for a moment. With each passing minute, the stakes grew higher. They were walking on thin ice, and one more slip-up could mean the end of the dinner service altogether. Ramsey could pull the plug at any time, and with the way things were going, it looked like that moment was drawing near. I, like I said, Chef, I need a two minutes. Well, all the garnish is here. Where's the teamwork between you three? Wait, did I hear teamwork? That was nowhere to be found. The meat wasn't ready. The garnish station was a ghost town, and communication. Forget about it. Even when Andrea tried to ask Giovanni for help, he either shrugged her off with silence, or spat out some random words that sounded like a foreign language. It was total chaos. On one hand, Robert was waiting with his ingredients ready, while Giovanni was lost in his own world, miles away from serving any meat. Ramsey was running around like a headless chicken himself, trying to coordinate the chaos, but every attempt just seemed to dig the hole deeper. A Wellington, a lamb mid rare. A well, a lamb mid, a well done. Can I drop the door, guys? How long's that Wellington? Finally, he called the trio into a corner. You could feel the dread radiating off them as they approached. They all knew what was coming. Ramsey snapped. Those three were pathetic that night. Giovanni clearly didn't care. Robert was way behind, and Andrea, she didn't even know what planet she was on. 
you could see everyone watching squirming in their seats, practically begging for a miracle. All three of you are pathetic. You don't care. I care, You're Jeff. way behind and you haven't got a fucking clue. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it did. Giovanni had put a hot pan in the cooler, and guess what? Robert touched it with his bare hand. Talk about a rookie move. He burned his fingers, and it was a second-degree burn. Ramsey was at his wit's end. He just looked at the chaos unfolding around him, horror etched on his face. The kitchen was crumbling, stations were failing, and things were even starting to catch fire. Why are you fucking going Finally, Ramsey, worn down and defeated, declared that he is closing the kitchen. You could feel the air go cold. It was a total meltdown, and honestly, it was a wonder he didn't just question whether he'd pick the right final six contestants. All that hard work, and it felt like it was unraveling right in front of his eyes. Are you covered up? Dynamic six, yeah, my fucking ass. Fuck off a lot of you. As the contestants stood there, you could see the weight of their mistakes hanging heavy in the air. It was a night that would go down in Hell's Kitchen history, and you had to wonder if anyone would actually make it through this mess. Would they rise from the ashes? Or was this truly the end of their culinary dreams? Only time would tell, but it was shaping up to be one unforgettable episode. That's what we do, serve them! By the way, you got a little touch of van on that one! Look at me! Help me out here! Like ships passing in the night, and it was clear they needed to communicate better. But with Ramsey barking orders, the pressure mounting, and it was clear that it was now or never. Would they find their footing it was slipping fast. Promises of halibut in three minutes turned into empty words, as the fish finally arrived at the pass, completely raw. Fucking raw! Contemplating how to salvage this disaster. Meanwhile, Van was trying- In an effort to regain some semblance of order, Ramsey dragged Van into the storage room. Ariel had left the lettuce unattended on a hot stove, and it was charred beyond recognition. How could someone stand right next to a burning pan? And hey, if want to keep the entertainment going, make sure you check out this next video where Ramsey did something shocking.